What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Eggs Avenue Show on the Eggs Avenue YouTube channel. As usual, I'm Patrick Hennessy. That's Sam Rourke. Dan, how are we doing on this fabulous day? Doing good, man. Doing good. Yankees taking their first three series of the year. Not sure you can complain about that. So I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Baseball season off to a, a strong start. Been playing a lot of MLB The Show. Me and my boys had like three straight days of land partying. You know what that is? No. So we all sit together in a room and you play video games together. But yo, baseball's hot in the streets is my point. I'm feeling good. How are you? I'm great. Um, we have a lot of good things cooking. Uh, the Yankees are good. We have a ticket giveaway winner being announced at the end of today's end episode. Of the show. Bro, also, we got these beautiful shirts on. Quick shout out to FOCO, code Yankees Avenue 15. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I'm feeling good today because of this shirt. We'll talk about it a little more Vibes. halfway through. But yeah, shout out FOCO, code Yankees Avenue 15% off. But let's talk some Yankee baseball. What do you say, huh? Yeah, let's huh? get right into topic number one. And let's talk about the man of the beginning of the season, Franchi friggin Cordero he's bro he's off to a pretty good start uh he's leading the team with seven RBIs with two home runs I guess I've seen a couple people ask the question on Twitter specifically on Sunday after he hit that home run against the Orioles is he the new Matt Carpenter bro I'm so torn in this because I'm very excited about Franchi don't get me wrong I'm I'm more willing to put it as I don't think he's gonna be this year's Matt Carpenter just because that was more of like a reawakening for him like he was already a really good MLB hitter of course Franchi never really been that career 83 OPS plus 224 hitter has never besides in the minors the last couple of years, he's never really done much with the bat. So it's not like he's getting back to where he was. This would just be a totally different player, which we've seen the Yankees unlock in recent years. So you have that going for him. I think he could be a very valuable piece off the bench. I mean, seeing what he did against Baltimore, those two home runs, which were pretty damn big home runs that he hit off the bench against righties. As a platoon, until the Yankees do acquire, hopefully, an outfielder at the deadline, as that being like the missing piece offensively, I think, yeah, I think he could serve a role on this team. I don't, I get nervous about the Yankees fooling themselves into thinking he might be the answer. And then you roll into him at the playoffs and he can't hit for shit. That's what would concern me a little bit. But, dude, I'm all aboard the Franchi train. I'm all aboard it, bro. Yeah, no, uh, I definitely think what we've seen from him is like exceeded expectations so far. And granted, it's a, an extremely small sample size, but this is kind of what, the most ideal scenario would have been with Frenchy Cordero, right? Also, Frenchy or Fr Franchi? I think it's Franchi, Franchi which is a right? sick name. And that you can kind of go off a one-name basis with him going forward, I think. Just Franchi. Yeah. Because we also yeah. got another Cordero on the team as well. So, sure. Yeah, Jimmy you know. Cordero. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, speak, speaking of Franchi, uh, I think he kind of provides the Yankees with some sort of Matt Carpenter-esque vibe to it. And I think that that's why maybe you see some sort of comparison, but I think it's unfair to say like he's this year's Matt Carpenter, just because what we saw from Carpenter last year, I don't really think it can be replicated. Um, now, obviously it's possible, but I don't think that it's reasonable to expect that from a guy like Frenchie. Um, but I think overall, I agree with you in the sense of, Obviously, we want to see him do well, but we don't want to see him do so well to the point where, like, he convinces the Yankees that they don't need to go out and get an outfielder at the deadline, right? I think that he could definitely fill in well for the time being now, but I think even if this dude is raking at the all-star break, I still think you need to go out and get an outfield bat, right? Yeah, without question. And what's really going to be interesting is once Harrison Bader comes back, because what is Aaron Hicks's role right now? It's he platoons against, he'll face lefties because he's better from the right side. Now, when Bader comes back, I mean, that's pretty much your, your everyday center fielder. And Oswaldo's not going anywhere. Here's your left fielder. If you're platooning, assuming Bader's playing against righties, which he obviously will, and then say Cordero gets in there against um, some righties as well, like where is – I don't really see where Hicks, Hicks' playing time is going to come. And then you're also going to have, what, six outfielders on the roster? Five out like, – this could get yeah. interesting roster, like, number-wise. Because I'm not sure the Yankees expected to still have Cordero on the team come Bader's return. Now, how do you get rid of him? I but that's my thing too, right? It's like if he's still raking when Bader returns, you can't dump him and then keep Hicks on the roster, right? It would be the same sort of reaction if they would have started the season without Anthony Volpe as their starting shortstop, right? And, and well, maybe, but definitely there would be like some outrage for sure. Yeah, honestly, yeah, considering it's Hicks, that would be like the one. Yeah, absolutely, actually. And then Donaldson would be back at some point too. So, you know, it could get interesting roster wise, but it's all all good things though, because because Franchi's raking and Hey, I want to, while we're talking about it, shout out Hicks. He did have a big RBI single that sure. tied the game the other day. Shout out to him. And one more mention, since we brought him up, or pretty much a part of the topic of the question, Matt Carpenter has an 835 OPS, 18 at-bats so far for the Padres this year. Shout out. Yeah, yeah shout, shout out, out Matt Carpenter. Carpenter. Uh, but yeah, I think kind of like culminating this, this topic here, I just think uh, as long as we see Frenchie get at-bats, as long as we see him get playing time, we just want to see him do well. 
And I think the Yankees kind of just have to take it game by game at this point. And if he keeps doing well, then they'll just keep reassessing the situation. You know what I mean? But I think that what we've seen from him so far is beyond expectation. So hopefully he keeps it up. Word up. Uh, But yeah, getting into topic number two here. Yeah, let's talk about Anthony Volpe a little bit, just because I I don't want to say he is, but polarizing isn't the word. More so just like uh, the idea of, well, with rookies not performing well, there's definitely a conversation about. No, 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 I'm I'm saying like, like what, like Anthony Volpe represents a a massive storyline for the Yankees coming into the season. Yes. And it was obviously, I don't even want to say it was a debate as to whether or not he should be the opening day starting shortstop, but there was people debating whether or not it was going to happen. And now, yeah, those uh, people are a lot louder now than they were two weeks ago. But sure, yeah, sure. Uh, but through his first nine uh, big league games, he's just four for twenty-eight, and he has no RBIs. Even though he did record his first triple on Saturday. Um, what's however, this? Also, it was a triple. What you mean? No, it was no, a triple. I know. It was a nice it, triple off the wall. Okay, I was gonna say it, it was a triple in the midst of, I guess, kind of a, a streak where he just looked absolutely lost at the plate. Yeah, and yeah, just about every at bat. So that's why I'm kind of like it was a triple, but also it, it didn't really. You know what I mean? I got so, you. So I, I guess we kind of look at Anthony Volpe through his first nine big league games. Are you concerned at all? Because I'm going to be honest, and I posted on Twitter, and I think people might have taken this the wrong way. I said, Anthony Volpe looks absolutely lost at the plate right now, like some of the worst at-bats I've ever seen. Now, I'm not saying that in terms of, like, it's a problem. I'm saying that just in terms of what I've seen from Anthony Volpe lately. He looks lost completely, and there's kind of no ignoring that. Yeah, definitely. I'm not even sure it needs to be pointed out until at least like give him a couple weeks to, to go by. Cause what do we really expect? I mean, the struggles and adapting to the big leagues, like that was going to be a process and it's something that we'll probably have to deal with potentially for the rest of the month. I mean, there's some stats here that for anybody who is worried about him might calm you down, should calm you down. So last year's top two American league rookie of the years uh, or Julio Rodriguez won the award. Adley Rushman was a runner up. So let's go through their first nine MLB games. Julio, First nine, batted 125 without a home run, had an eight OPS plus, an eight OPS plus through his first nine games. Adley Rushman's first nine games, batted 200 without a home run, a 526 OPS. So, I mean, we all know the years they end up uh, to go on to have. Volpe's going to be fine. And even if he's not going to be fine, I'm sure it's not going to like make a decision on that based off not even just the first week, two weeks, like the first month. I mean, even Derek Jeter, his first half in 96 wasn't all that great. His overall numbers were because he eventually found himself, and that's what we hope happens with Volpe. I'm not worried at all. And I, I think some of the people on – um and not you for just pointing out. Like, if you want to point out that he's been not good, that's that's one thing. But for – to say the Yankees should send him down after nine games. And there's not too that's many people out there, but they definitely exist. Shocking to me. And those are – you know, that's just an easy – whether I already follow them, I don't know. Like, either unfollow or just mute because you just shouldn't listen to those people in your life. I'll no, say this I- to close it out. I think there should be no problem unless it costs the Yankees games. And so far, while there's been some plays that you could be like, oh, you don't know if he made this play, they could have won. But I mean, you go back to that Giants game where he didn't make that double play or whatever it was. Yankees lost that game because bad umpires and the pitching, that was like the one game that they were shitty. But my point is, if he starts performing so bad to where like it's costing them games and it's a problem, all right, that's different. But right now, I mean, they're six and three, so something's working. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you give Volpe until the end of May. Uh, and That's I think if, if the end of May arrives and you're kind of two months into the season now and he's still looking completely lost at the plate, then I think you might have to just reassess the situation. Yeah. And I think that that would be a very difficult for, thing for the Yankees to do, considering the fact that he's supposed to be the guy of the future. And I think he definitely still is. Yeah. But I think you kind of if it's two months into the season, and he's sh- still struggling. I'll ask you a little earlier. Reassess. I would say maybe like. If it's like third week of May, like halfway through May, and he's looking awful, like I'm thinking Jared Kalenic. Remember how bad he looked? Sure. And still kind of does. I mean, I'm not sure if he's even on the yeah. roster these days, but he basically, you know, breaked in the minor leagues, was a very t- high regarded prospect. And I think his career average is still below 200. So, I mean, with that case, it was like obvious art. Right, this dude needs more help. With Volpe, I think it's a case of, yo, he's just pressing a little bit. And that's totally fine, especially because he hasn't gotten into his groove yet. If he were to like, say, looked great out of the gate and then fall into a slump and just something looked really off, that would be a little bit more concerning for me. But right now it's just, yo, this kid has the yips. The second, and you know, you hope the triple would be part of it. It's only been one game since, but once he gets that first home right of the way or gets a big hit, then like that weights fully off or at least mostly off his shoulders. And he can just play baseball again. It's kind of like, you know, we always talk about like when he was first debuting on opening day, you hope he gets a ground ball to short like right away. Why? Because you get that out and you're like, all right, work. I'm a big leaguer. I can play the yeah. position. He hasn't seen any success. So how is really, really going to be confident? confidence there? He just needs to 
He needs that first homer, bro. Get that first homer with sure. Show. And I, I think going. overall, I was just gonna say, like answering the question as to like whether or not I'm concerned with Volpe, I think the answer right now is no. Right. I mean, obviously, I'm just stating the ob- obvious in, in terms of he's looked atrocious at the plate for the most part. But I also think at the same time, like, bro, it's been nine games. And obviously, yeah. we have to talk about it. But I'm not going to get too over dramatic, even though I'm like the definition of recency bias. Um, but one thing I do want to bring up is I don't know if you saw what Michael K said. I think it was a, a few days ago. He was kind of comparing Anthony Volpe struggling to Aaron Hicks struggling. And I think a lot of people kind of took it the wrong way. And for one of the first times I'm kind of coming to the defense of Michael K because I agree with him. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I'm not. You're enlightening. I, I don't remember. So basically he said something along the lines of um, Anthony Volpe struggling. I think he went like over four in a game and Aaron Hicks went over four in a game, but Aaron Hicks gets showered with booze. And I think basically what his comparison there was is that Aaron Hicks has to do a thousand times more in order to be cheered by Yankee fans like Volpe is, even if he's struggling, um, just because of like the hole that he's dug himself in. So, well, that's I a no brainer, though. Yeah, no. And I think a lot of people took it the wrong way because they're like, yo, Volpe and Hicks aren't on the same level. But I think kind of just like bringing that back to Volpe is that I, I want to see him not dig himself in a hole, right? Because he's mm. on like cloud nine as far as Yankee fans go. And Yankee fans love you until they hate you and i think like it, it, it may take a while for them to like quote unquote hate anthony volpe but like we said if it's the end of may and this dude's still struggling they will flip on this kid like a dime bro. dude like i think he, will, he you know what i mean yeah Especially i with think the expectations yeah they, de- they definitely like hate him yet but i think the cloud nine point that you made i think it's already kind of taken a hit which is fine it's been like a week but like the hype has naturally died down i mean like it's at a peak on opening day and then he's hasn't performed great since then and it's not only just died down, you have some haters out there, but yeah, dude, I mean, that's kind of how it always has been. I mean, at some point and really by now, like you're a big leaguer and what you, especially as a Yankee dude, like you have to perform or you're going to get booed. I always bring up the example of A-Rod in 2015 coming off suspension. Like people talking about, oh, he's going to get booed. He's going to get cheered. How are Yankee fans going to re- uh, receive him? I would say like receive him the same way they do every other player. If you perform, you'll be cheered. If you don't, you'll be booed. And eventually that'll be the case with Volpe too. I mean, like there's a world where if he's really shit in the bed, like maybe by, I think it would take a bit probably by like maybe, maybe late May, early June for him to start getting those booze, but that's how it is with any player. So like, I don't know. I don't, that I I don't really agree with that. I I just even bringing it up. I'd like to see it not get to that point though. You know what I mean? It won't like, kind of like, yeah, yeah, let's also put it clear here. I mean, like, at least I will on my end. Like I still have such faith in this dude. I mean, like, I think he's going to, I haven't winning the AL rookie of the year. So there's my pick firmed double down Pat. Double down. I like it. I, I like it. Personally, I don't know if I'd go that route, but I wouldn't be shocked. Like, I know before the before the season started, I said, like, yo, Anthony Volpe, unanimous rookie of the year. I, I think I might have, like, set the bar a little bit too high. No, it's fair to but, assume that he's going to be beat by Brito. I get that. I like that, actually. Yo, no. Johnny Brito's been killing it. Like, this isn't, know, like, a, a topic, but, bro, dude has been dogging. Yeah, and that was a different kind of, like, impressive start. Like, the first go-around against San Francisco, he just lights out. Nobody could touch him. This time around, he had a battle and still got through five, one run, got the death. I think we could touch on him a little bit when we talk about Clark. All right, Dan, before we get to topic number three, want to give a huge shout-out to our sponsor, Foco. Got these beautiful shirts from them. They have the best Yankees merchandise out there. I'm going to be rocking this all summer. Also, Dan, the weather's going to be beautiful this week. I'm going to be rocking it all week. But what else you got for him? Pump for the good weather. Yo, yes, the shirt, big fan, very comfy, and it looks very snazzy as well. Bobbleheads, you guys know the deal. They're the place to go for them. Modern, old-fashioned bobbleheads, or a little mix of both like this one right here. Foco is the place to go. Got some new things in as well. First of all, like trying to get back into the gym. Kind of have been. Yo, shorts, these days nice. are a must, especially with the nice weather. Yankee logo on it. Can't get better than that. And, yo, this, this is what I'm most excited about. Sex. My windbreaker. My windbreaker. Just sent in my Foco. Got it today. Stoked. You know, get warmer out. But I still do like to wear something with a hood. Can't wear a sweatshirt, but this is the way to go. So shout out Foco. Code Yankees Avenue. It's what you got to use. Get 15% off. And, yo, you're getting dope stuff. And you're also supporting the show. So do it, Code bro. Yankees Avenue, 15% off. Getting into topic number three here. Dan, let's talk about the man, the captain, Aaron freaking Judge. How could we not talk about him? He's kind of, we, we talked about it in the last episode, I think. He's kind of picked up right where he left off in 2022. Uh, bro, he's absolutely scorching. Uh, he's scorching hot, red hot, whatever you want to call it. He has, what, four home runs so far this season. You know, you have some people being like, yo, he might break 62. Are we in tune 
for another record-breaking season from Aaron Judge this year. All right, so record-breaking in terms of home runs, I'm going to stick with no. Although I don't deny it's eventually possible. My prediction has been 2025. He'll make another uh, – he'll flare with the, the record again. However, dude, you remember me outlining it. I told you this my whole plan. Yeah, no, I Maybe it was it. 24. No, no, it was 25, I think. Whatever. Point is, I don't see that happening. But what I do see happening is a 2002 Barry Bonds season. Now, of course, for those who don't remember – 01 Bonds broke the record, hit 73 home runs in one of the greatest offensive seasons of all time. The next year fell off quite a bit home run wise, just down to 46. However, rate wise, like statistics, like if you look at a slash line, he had a better offensive year. 244 OPS plus, insane, compared to a 235 in the 73 homer year. He had a, a 582 on base percentage in 02 compared to the 515 he had during the 73 homer year in 01. And I think that might be the route we're headed with Judge, especially with. Dude, you look at the stats since the start of last year. There's one that really stands out to me, especially in the comparison to Barry Bonds. His OBP since the second half of last year is 491. 491, which is just otherworldly insane, which is over a sample size, too, of over, I think it was, sorry, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but I think it was 75 games or 80 games, which is insane, unbelievable. So I don't think, you know, the home run's going to be there because that's just crazy. But I think we're going to see him walk like nuts. We're going to see him just better at bats and just be a very consistent hitter. I wouldn't be shocked if his overall stats, like OPS plus, if you will, is higher this year than it was last year, even without breaking a record. Yeah, I think overall what we're looking at from Judge is just greatness. Bro. And I think, I think it's kind of wild because coming into this year, I think we both mentioned the fact that regression was inevitable for him. But now I'm looking at his start to the season. It's like, yo, is he is he going to regress at all? Or is this just like who Aaron Judge is? And mm-hmm. I think that this is just so nice to see because it's like, bro, the league seemingly still hasn't figured him out, which is literally picked weird. up where he left off last year. It's ridiculous. No, and I know. And no, 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 go on, go on, go on. I just wonder, you know, even though I'm pointing out how much he's walking, I still feel he's not walking enough. Like why? I, I noticed this last year and there was a point like for a couple weeks where they're kind of giving him the bonds treatment. But even so, man, like, why do you pitch to this guy? And the obvious answer is you have Rizzo and stand behind him. But at least during some of these streaks, which he's not even in right now, but he'll go on one where, like, how could you give this guy anything in the zone and, like, feel like it's reasonable to do that? I yeah, I don't get dude, it, but I'm not complaining. It, But it's also insane to me because it's like you can't really expect Judge to, like, keep up that pace that he had in 2022 where he was hitting, like, a ridiculous amount of home runs on a consistent basis. But if you look at, like, if you compare this year to last year – he didn't hit a home run for what the first two weeks of the 2022 so, season. Yeah, he didn't hit he his already first, had four. Yeah, he didn't hit his second home run until 14 games in. He actually, I think it's commonly misquoted, even him self quoted today. He hit his first homer six games into last year, but then went on like a 12 game streak without one. So, yeah, okay. it wasn't until April or the, the 14th game of last year where he hit his second homer. Today, in his ninth game or 10th game, he's already at four on pace for 72. Kind of insane. Listen, if Aaron Judge hit 72 home runs this season, I think we both have to, like, shave our heads. 63. Let's just forget 72. If he hits 63, we got to do something. Okay. I say shave our heads. Not, like, ball, but or, like cut. Or what, what if we get the Judge haircut with, like, like the shave size and, like, the stripes? You would look good with that? I would look like a fucking pig, so absolutely not. Why don't you think you would look good? I think I, you'd look fine. I think this is the hair that I need to have. Which might become as a shock to some people, but well, so I comments. mean, like just like a crew cut or like longer. Like I feel like if I shaved my head, like just to a um, buzz cut, wouldn't be good. So I'm good we'll on see. that, but I'll do something. I'll, 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 dude, I'll like, I'll dye my hair something whack. I already done it once in this show. Remember that? Not on yes. the show, but yes, I do actually. That was a weird. All hair. right, La- last question regarding. Jeff. I had a point. I want to say shout out Anthony Volpe because uh, he has Vegas by Doja Cat as his walk up song, which is like the. Elvis theme song for the new movie. What? Go on. Cool. That's so cool. I hate you. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, if you had to pick right now, give me a number of home runs that Aaron Judge finishes off with this year. 54. Been very consistent with that. A-Rod's 07, remember? I like 56. 56? And, bro, that, that is, it's still kind of insane to say that. Because any other season we'd be looking like we would never even guess that, right? But he's coming off sixty-two, which is still wild as. All right, hell obviously I would guess Aaron Judge hitting a fifty homer season before. Let's not forget I no, predicted no, no, you 62. have, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yo, bro. We know, we know, just, you know, who's the glass half full guy? Who's the glass half empty guy here, bro? It's not groundbreaking news. Yo, we should move on. We've been talking for ten years, bro. God damn. Getting into topic number four here. 
Uh, let's talk about Clark Schmidt, you know, because I'm going to be honest with you, Dan, completely given up on Clark Schmidt. I think he's a complete waste. I don't think as a starter, I've given up on him. Sorry. I sure. interrupted you. Sure. But I will say, I think if the Yankees keep throwing him out there as a starter, he's going to become Sonny Gray. He's kind of already become Sonny Gray. I think that if you look at the 2023 Yankees, Clark Schmidt might be on the same level of hate as Aaron Hicks. No, I think dude, Josh Donaldson stop. is more liked than Clark Schmidt right now. That's wrong. That's just, that's I flat out not true. But let's let here. Let's have the person with common sense speak for a minute. Um, yo, I think no, you're a smart guy, Pat. I just disagree with you there. I think this Clark's era as a starter is coming to an end, at least with the Yankees. It's quite obvious. Burrito's better. Rodon's gonna be back soon. Sebi will come back soon after that too. Sure, probably a couple more starts. You know, spot starts here and there. But I think yo, it's quite obvious. Like he can't get lefties out. First time through the order is usually fine, but then after that, he unravels. This dude's a reliever if I ever saw one. And he could be a good one because, you know, he is capable of getting hitters out for, for one or two innings. But, yeah, there's honestly not much more for me to even say than that. It's just I think he has maybe as a consistent, like, staple in the rotation, maybe probably just till Rodone's back, and then yeah. it's to the bullpen. And I wouldn't be shocked if he's not a Yankee by August. Because he does have value because the stuff is nuts. I'll always point that out. The stuff is nuts, like all the spin rates, all that. Teams will want him. I just, yes. I, I'm not, in, I'm not in love with him. The, the only problem, bro, we talked about, like we called this before the season, like we knew Clark Schmidt wasn't a starter. He's never proven he can be a, a solid. I was starting definitely to give him the chance though, because yo, first round pick, and he is technically a starting pitcher. And the cutter excited me. And let's be clear, you know, it's only two games. So for all I know, he'll bounce back, and that cutter will work yeah. against lefties. But it's not so far, and it's like the evidence is so black and white of what's happening. It's like, yo, he's getting righties out, and he's performing over a short span but he's not getting lefties out and his second time through the order is a shit show it's like kind of exactly what the haters would expect from clark so you know and i don't say haters in a bad way i'm saying people that were low on clark i mean like this is all the things yeah. you're worried about and he's doing all that once again so yeah no and, yeah. and speaking of his trade value um i definitely think if the yankees want his trade value to get back to what it was he's going to have to go back to the bullpen and prove himself because right now it's tough for the yankees to kind of like pitch clark schmidt to opposing teams just because it's like, yo, they they if they're going to be trading for him as a reliever, they want to see him perform like now as a yeah, reliever. Yeah, I don't think like, he did nothing to get like any, like a big piece out of him, but maybe he could be a, I don't know, say you have a big deal that needs like one more little, not throw in, but he'd be a nice piece to, to close a deal. Yes, but kind of shifting to the rotation as a whole now, can we just acknowledge the fact where the Yankees would be right now if Johnny Brito didn't like cement himself as like a, a legit starting pitcher in that rotation? Now? Because Bro, no, 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 I shout out to you because you were like, yo, Brito yeah, is going to be a dog this season. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but if, if he, if he hasn't, if he wasn't as consistent as he has been, the Yankees would be in serious trouble. Like, let's, I know, I know you're before the season, you're like, Pat, the rotation is nothing to worry about, yada, yada, yada. But if Brito wasn't killing it right now, the rotation is a serious problem because Herman isn't pitching well, Schmidt isn't pitching well. And if Brito wasn't pitching well, all you really have is Cole and Nestor. And, and that's that's not super ideal. So I think Brito deserves a massive shout out. And I'm not going to lie, like even when the Yankees rotation, uh, let's say uh, Sevi and uh, yeah. Rodon come back, I definitely think Brito has a spot. I think I prefer him as their number five over Herman or Schmidt at this point. Definitely over Schmidt. I uh, I'm willing to have the com like the competition play out over the season with Herman because I think he'll definitely get enough starts to where like like you will be able to have a conversation like based on many recent starts like all right who's better who's better. I think Brito has the better stuff, but I also I'm not down on Herman the way he's looked the first two starts. I mean, definitely hasn't been good, but he's also kind of always been a slow starter. I'm pretty sure he did the same thing last year and the year before. Brito would get the fifth spot though if I was in charge. Like a, ro a rotation Dang. dude of Cole, Rodon, Sevi, Nestor, Brito. Yeah. Early, no, also it's exciting. Did you see that they're converting Debbie Garcia to a, a reliever now? Kind of like a, a Michael King kind of guy. I did see that. Yeah. And apparently he's touching 97. The spin rate on his breaking ball is back to just being insane. Excited. Yo, and that's always been the, the case with with uh, not Brito, uh, with Davey. I mean, that was talked about like the second that he was on the top prospect charts. It's like, yo, I don't think it was just because the guy was short, but a lot of factors scouts predicted like this guy's eventually going to come out of the bullpen. And if that's what ends up happening, especially after like what happened to him the last couple years, because for those who don't know, Davey would top Yankee prospect and pitched well for us in 2020. So much yeah. so to where he started a playoff game, but then fell off, <laughs> off a cliff, like six year, right back to back season, the minor stuff like that. But apparently stuff is looking good again. And dude, if you can 
get that out of Davey Garcia now, just him turn into a solid reliever. And that makes sense too. Like if the Yankees said that's role, you see him helping the big league squad at like word. All right, patch him out of the bullpen. Yeah, no, I agree a thousand percent. All right, Dan, getting into topic number five. This is kind of a fun one. And it is, listen, it, it's a little bit of a, a story. So Eric Kratz recently came out and he stated, the, the question was asked, oh, have you ever seen a major league veteran in the minors kind of not treat the minor league team to a meal, right? Because it's it's a pretty common thing to yeah. do. Like major leaguers, you know, they, they treat the team. Maybe they'll them buy them all like Rolex or something. Yeah. He was asked, have you ever seen a, a veteran down there who refused to do it, right? Did he give a name? He didn't give a name, but he said it was on the Yankees. And he saw and and he saw this and the guy said, and I quote, none of these guys are going to ever make the big leagues anyway. And I don't know them. So who cares? So now, bro, the wheels are turned in my head. Who in the minor leagues when Eric Kratz was there as a major league veteran would refuse to do this? All right. So Kratz was definitely on the team in 2020. So, dude, I'm like, so there was no minor league season in 2020. True. Well, yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. So that would have to be because he wasn't around in 21. So maybe tw- I think 2019, I think he was with the Yankees. Um, Are we going to crack this code? I'm cracking it right now. I'm checking out his career stats. I'm making sure he was with the Yankees in 19. But regardless, I know he was with during the Chapman era. No. So, oh, wait, no, no, no. So 2017, he was with the Yankees. Um, so, yeah. So 20- what, what veteran would rehab in the minors in 2017? Chapman. Okay, so he was with Scranton Wilkesbury in 18 and 19. Um, was only with the Yankees actually in the big league club for four games in 17. So you're looking at 18 and 19 is when this experience would be from. Dude. Yes. Uh, Chapman. No way it would be Bird. Because I mean, well, no, 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 it wasn't Chapman because I doubt Kratz knows Spanish. Well, I don't know. Did Kratz hear it directly? Or he could just heard it. That's, rumble. that's what he said. He heard a thing he like, yo, he where's, all the, the, where's the food? Say. And then somebody says, oh, Chapman said, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I mean, like, no way it was. Honestly, I can't really think that far back. I mean, there's obviously a lot of IL stints, but like, there's guys, obviously, we know it wasn't. It wasn't Judge. It wasn't Stan. It wasn't Greg Bird. No, because Greg Bird would be cool. Was it Aaron Hicks? I don't know. I'm surprised this didn't get out. I mean, that's that's kind of fucked. I mean, Plouffe tells me about this all the time. That's like a thing that you do, and you treat him good I too. Know. Like you drop kind of like a, like a Could grand be Adam Lind. Sometimes. No, but if that's and if that's the case, I don't really care. Adam Lind. No, Adam Lind was on the. I, I would assume. Line. I would assume it's somebody like of a prevalent name. That's what I'm else, assuming. You know what I mean? I feel like it's Chapman, bro. I don't know. Oh, I think I know. Who? I think I could know. We'll wrap it up. With Logan this. Morrison. No, but. These guys never like what didn't you say rehab assignment? Like these guys never were even on the big. No, team. no, no. Like a MLB veteran. No, but that's only a thing when you're on a rehab assignment, like to what do, do the to, to buy the dinner. That's when like, all right, you're rehabbing down in AAA, but none of these guys ever made the big league roster. Like Lind, Luke Morrison. I think it's Chapman. I don't know. I mean, I guess we could spend all day thinking about it. You guys let us know in the comment section below. Speaking of though, um I think it was Judge. You're an idiot. Um <laughs> just kidding, I love you. Uh and uh giveaway announcement. Who won? Yes. Um I probably actually should have that up. It's okay. Who won the giveaway, Pat? What's his name? The giveaway winner is his Twitter at is at Michael underscore Martini with a Y. Shout Joey Gallo's return. You're going. You're going to Joey Gallo's return. Uh, Pat's going to DM you? Solid seats too. Yeah. We're, we're going to DM you uh, probably by the time this episode's out. So shout out to you. Uh, and if you don't claim the tickets, like within the next day or so, we're moving on to a new winner. Simple yeah. We'll give you a little time though, because this one is a week. Also, yo. If you didn't win this giveaway, if your name's not Michael Martini, we're doing them like pretty consistently. Uh, yeah, so like it might be thinking. like at very least every other week, maybe fucking F and oh, every week. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to we'll curse see. less in the show, guys. I'm sorry. I know the, the GDs I say upset you as well. I'm so sorry, especially on this beautiful Easter Sunday, which is when we're recording. But yo, let's get out of here. Um, what was going to say? I feel like I had another point to make. That's unfortunate. Pat Socials, where can they find you? Yeah, follow me on, on uh, Twitter and TikTok, at Patrick on Instagram, at True Hennessy. Also, follow, subscribe to Better on YouTube. I'm going live on there every day this week after the Yankee game. So stay tuned for that. Hell yeah, bro. Every day. That's nuts, dude. That's nuts. I kind of want to get to the live game, by the way. Like, I wouldn't mind just... We could do it. Guys, this is an idea I kind of am, like, tossing my head. Like, just do, like, a, I don't know, every now and then, like, a, a Yankees town hall type thing. Where, like, the most low-key, just sit, chill, read comments, and just, like, no, nothing produced, just to hang out and talk Yankee baseball. But... Just something in the in my brain, not even in the works. But yo, 
Dan Outwork on Twitter, Dan Outwork on Instagram, Yankees Avenue on Instagram, and Yankees Avenue here on YouTube as well. I ordered my plaque. Nice. Yeah. I wasn't like positive I was going to get one because like the highlights and shit, you know, but it's coming. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Thank you guys. Thank you, Pat. I'm like, I always, I'm like been doing this lately, bro. I'm like delaying getting off the show because I just have That's okay. You know, it's, 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 it's not okay. An Irish goodbye. This episode's probably like 36 minutes, I guess, but that's fine. All right. Cue cue another day in paradise. How about that? Let's go, Yankees. Her body's gone like September. She burns through the night like an ember. And all those things we try forgetting, I remember. But we say we all fine, we all fine.